We're taking the great controversy to more than 148 million homes in North America, and we want you with us. Here's the thing. We all know God has called us to preach the three angels' messages, but it's not always easy to know how to share it with others. That's why we made it our goal to get the great controversy into every single home in North America by 2026. But it's more than just giving out a book. We want to make it easy for anyone to share it, for anyone to read it. It's way more than just a book. It's an interactive experience. Just scan the QR code at the beginning of every chapter and have access to video, audio version, and other study materials. We want everyone to interact with the book in their own way. We've also created a system that's easy to implement in your local church so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you want to make it even easier, we can come to you and provide all the tools you need to get started. God wants you to be involved in the last proclamation of his message. Get involved in sharing the great controversy with Streams of Light and all organizations that are doing something spectacular like that. So if you want to help us achieve this incredible goal of reaching every home in North America, sign up today at streamsoflight.net. Good morning, happy Sabbath, church family. It's nice to be here this Sabbath morning. And um, as we are having our worship today, we want to commemorate, our church commemorates um, the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I would like to challenge you to forget about... Easter sales, you know, we have at all kinds of places, um, sales, so forget about that for, for an hour or two. Uh, I want to challenge you to forget about um, loans. I'd like to challenge you to forget about whatever you have at home, uh, challenges or problems, and focus more on God and our program here. So I would like to welcome... Uh, our visitors today, let's see, do we have visitors? I saw hands in, okay, we have some visitors. Welcome to our church. If you are the first time visitor, welcome to our church. We are happy to have you here. And on the same time, we have online viewers, our friends online. I'm not sure which camera is the right camera to look for, uh, for the online, uh, this one here. Welcome to our church, Carrollton Church, and we hope that you are going to have a good time online watching our program. Now, I would like, before we start, I would like to read what we usually read first, our mission statement. 
which is, we can find it in Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them how to observe all things that I have commanded to you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Amen. The lyrics you ace actually on this little pamphlet, it will say uh, hymn number 86. How great thou art. Oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand have made. I see the stars. Mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great. Lofty mountain grander, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then sing, my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sing, my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art. And when I think that God his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. You may be seated. Our next song for this morning is going to be hymn number 476, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary.
born in church. I am so happy to have this uh, group of youth singing with us. And we're going to do this a cappella, OK? Um, we're going to do days are filled with sorrow and care. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted up Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Chapter 11, verse 25. John 11, 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let's stand for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the sacrifice we have, sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for us. He lived, he died, and he was resurrected for us. And I'm praying that our lives, our hearts and minds will be blessed today with your Holy Spirit. And I know even though we, we sang a cappella. This was unconventional for us. But unconventional is this service today. And we know that unconventional was your sacrifice for all of us. I am praying that you will bless this service today. Bless our many preachers that we are going to have today. They are going to sing for us. Give them clear voices and help them to help us understand what the sacrifice of Jesus means to us. We know that you are listening to our prayers, and you are going to answer our prayer, because we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our next song is going to be My Jesus, I Love Thee, hymn number 321. Jesus. 
Happy Sabbath, church family. A special welcome to our visitors. It's a beautiful Sabbath day today. Uh, that last song that was just sung, it's my favorite since I was a child. Now, we're going to talk about tithe and, and offerings. Now, tithe and offering was instituted from, from God, from for everlasting. It's not a man-made uh, thing. So offering, tithe and offering is to carry out God's work. So we're going to pray for this offering to be used in God's name. Bow your heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be the, your name. We thank you for your blessings to bring us all together today to worship and praise you. Father, we, we pray for the, the, the givers, whether small or great, it's in your name. So, Father, bless this offering today. In your son's name, amen.
Hello kids, happy Sabbath. Are you happy today? Because I am. Welcome. Today is a very special Sabbath because we have a very special program that's celebrating a very special thing. And that is tomorrow. Do you know what it is? Can anyone tell me? Yes, it's Easter, or as we like to call it, the Resurrection Day. Okay, so today I have something for you here. We're going to do a little quiz and a little, I have a few things to show to you. And I have here in this bag a few other small bags with some things in it. But first, I want to ask you, what reminds you of Easter? What's that thing that when you say it, you think of Easter? Do you know there's something in your mind? Yes? How Jesus died? Yes. Well, I'm going to give you some ideas. So when they say Easter, people think of a, think of a lot of things. And I think I have them pretty much them all in this bag. And some of those things were there when the story happened. Some of those things have never been there, but somehow they made it into the story down the road right? And one of those things, I also have it in here, is the most important thing that happened in Easter, okay? So let's try. This is the first bag. Does anyone want to take it out? Let's see. Okay, we're going to spread it here. Oh, what do we have? Some grass, right? a caterpillar, and a butterfly. Okay, so people, when they think of Easter, they think of spring many times, right? Spring vacation, new life. Um, and you know, we think of this grass that is growing from the ground, and we think of the butterflies that come out of the caterpillar. Is this um, something that should take our minds to Easter? Yes, probably. Is this what Easter is about? Not really. not really or not entirely, right? Okay. Let's try the next one. Oh, what do you think I have here? Let's see. Oh, what's this? A bunny or an Easter bunny. Okay, so people think a lot of the, especially kids, right? When they think about Easter, they say, oh, there's a bunny. I want to ask you, was there a bunny in the story in the Bible? No, not really, right? So let's move on. Okay, let's try something. I, I hope we'll find something that was actually present at Easter, but we'll see. Okay, I have one here. Maybe this is the one? An egg, right. It's empty. <laughs> All right. Um, weren't there any eggs in that story? No. no. But yet, somehow, they remind us of Easter. Yes. It's a very long story, but we're not going to insist on that today. Okay, let's move on. Let's see if we can get a little bit warmer. Okay, this bag here. Do you know what this is? Yeah, what kind of flower? A white lily, right? This is a symbol of Easter because of the innocence and purity. Were there lilies? Maybe there were, we don't know. But is this the thing that's most important about Easter? Mm, no, not really. Okay. Let's see. Oh, this might be it. Let's see what I have here. Oh, yeah, sweets and food. I don't know about here in the United States, but where I'm coming from, food is a big deal at Easter. People literally eat until they go to the hospital. They eat a lot. They eat lamb and meatloaf and eggs and cake, and we have a very special filled bread. It's filled with walnuts and chocolate, Yeah, and it's called kozonak. It's really delicious. And a lot of people can't wait for Easter because they get to 
eat a lot. Okay, but is this story about food? No. <laughs> don't listen to the grown-ups, they don't know. No, Easter is not about food. Okay, let's try and get warmer. Okay, what do I have here? Do you know what this is? Yeah. Well, it's a church, right? So most Christians go to church on Easter. Is that a good thing? Yeah. Yes, of course. And there's a type of Christians that go to church only on Christmas and Easter, so that's a pretty big day. Well, it's good to go to church for Easter, but is Easter about church? No, I mean, it's good to celebrate it in the church, right? But this is not what happened there at Easter. Okay, I think we're getting warmer and warmer. What do I have here? That's a cross. What happened at Easter? Yes, Jesus died and he was crucified. And this did happen at Easter, right? And we should not forget it. But is this all we're talking about on Easter? Mm, not really. Yes, it's a, it's a big part of Easter. But is it the most important part? It's a part that it's essential for Easter, yes. Okay, I'm going to end the suspense now and bring out the bag that has that most important thing that happened at Easter. Are you ready to see it? Ready? Okay. What's inside? Really? Do you think I got the wrong bag? It's empty. You know why it's empty? Because Jesus' tomb was empty. And that's the greatest news that we got for Easter. And that's what we celebrate. Because if that tomb wasn't empty, we wouldn't be here today. And we are thankful to Jesus for dying for us. And he died so that we were forgiven. But he left that tomb empty so that we are not only forgiven, but we can also live. And the big news and the best news and the thing that Easter is about is that Jesus is alive. And I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you collect your offering first. And in the back there, when you bring back your baskets, I have a surprise for you. I promise this one's not empty. There are some stickers here and the resurrection scene. And you get to choose the things that were there. Probably leave out the things that weren't there. And don't forget, you also have that most important thing there, the empty tomb. Okay? Let's have a word of prayer and then we can go collect the offering. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you for dying for us. And more than anything, we are thankful that you are alive and that the tomb is empty. And we're asking you to help us to always remember this, not, always, not only today, not only tomorrow, but every single day. Amen.
Thank you, children, for helping us with the um, collection of money for uh, our uh, church building fund. And uh, I would like to ask the adults, did you enjoy the children's story? Yes? Okay. And the next question would be, do you like stories? I'm asking the adults right now, and the children on the same time, but uh, I expect an answer from their parents, grandparents, or adults. So, do you like stories? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, I like stories. I like stories a lot. And I would like to introduce what's going to happen um, in the next uh, five hours here. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry, it's not going to take five hours. But I would like to introduce you what is going to happen here. So we are going to be, we are going to witness and hear and listen and watch. Guess what? Say it louder. A story. Yes, a story. But this story that we are going to be witnessing is going to be shared by preachers. And we are going to have here approximately uh, 20, 20 preachers. What, what's unusual is the fact that they are not going to preach, actually. But they are going to sing for all of us. And um, this, uh, this group that's going to uh, enjoy our, uh, help us enjoy um, songs and um, skits and this, uh, this play today. They came from different churches just to support Carrollton Church. And I just want to let them know and encourage them um, that they, they're going to do it their best because I've heard them last night and it was awesome on rehearsal. So... I'm going to uh, introduce the group. Uh, they are going to they are going to come in front here and sing for us and uh, help us to get into the picture of Jesus' death uh, and resurrection.
master's love, the mystery of all time and eternity, the hope of ages past and ages to come, for God so loved that he gave. And through his giving came life. It's Passover time, and the streets of Jerusalem echo with the voice of countless throngs of people. The marketplace is teeming with travelers making final purchases for the Passover meal. In the distance, a faint cry is heard, and then again, louder as the crowd approaches, Hail to the King, the Messiah has come! Jesus of Nazareth, son of our carpenter, sing by the prophets the promise to reign. Waiting for countless years, finally his time is here. Rejoice, rejoice, let hope of us Outcast all sit at his feet, a 
Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which was called Passover. And Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. And entering the city, they went and found a large furnished upper room. And when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Inside this room, you think at a feast they will be smiling, feeling some impending sense of doom. I never had been known for my good timing. Things are working out. Like I had planned I'm not really sure He's the son of man This piece of bread They serve me seems so stale The wine I'm drinking tastes a little sour Maybe it's just me I feel so pale Or maybe it's the tension of the hour Why it's so hard Just believe Is it him or 30 silver coins I need. Oh, to you, who betrays the Son of Man, it is better and never and more. Oh, to you, who betrays the Son of Man, 
final breath into the bowl. I really think it's time I should be going. The master did this too, and I am told to do what I must do, even with him knowing. Am I the one to do him in? Bread of life for living water. Please excuse me from this table. I am not hungry anymore. Bread of life for living water. Please excuse me from this table. I am not hungry anymore. Bread of life for living water. Please excuse me from this table. I am not hungry anymore. Bread of life for living water. Please excuse me from this table. I'm not hungry anymore. Bread of life for living water. Please excuse me from this table. I am not hungry anymore. Bread of life for living water. Please excuse me from this table. I am not hungry. Anymore. I am not hungry anymore. And having dipped the bread, Jesus gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. And Judas went out immediately, and it was night. And Jesus went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden. And Judas also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. And going a little farther into the garden, he fell on the ground and prayed. Gethsemane, this morning your garden was beautiful, beautiful. Gethsemane, your flowers are fragrant and colorful, colorful. But now as I kneel in the night, with great drops of sweat and blood pouring, darkness is crowding the light. I hope a new day will be dawn. Why do I find you here sleeping, sleeping? James and John, don't you know soon I'll be leaving, leaving? But here in my moment of grief, pray so you won't lose the power. The spirit is strong, the flesh is weak. Can you not watch for an hour? Father, 
is there a way this God might pass from me? Is there another way that I can see? No, will must be done. Getting quite loud, footsteps are coming much nearer. Judas, I wonder if you'll ever miss me, miss me. Oh, Judas, why to betray must you kiss me? Kiss me. And kissed him. Then they led him away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest.
And they bound Jesus, and they led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. But Pilate, knowing that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy, tried to release him to the people. And as was his custom at the time of the feast, but they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. And after he had been scourged, he delivered him up to be crucified. They led him to a place called Golgotha, which is translated the place of the skull. And there they crucified Jesus.
Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and the others brought spices that they might come and anoint Jesus. On the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen.
frightened followers into a force which literally altered the course of all humanity by the good news that Jesus is indeed Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Hallowed be the name of Jesus. Oh 
Christ so special during this time of the year I get it he lived like 2,000 years ago and uh, but is it relevant today if I look at the tomb over there you know I can I can only imagine how many demons were on that on the on that stone over there on the tomb and they were they were trying to prevent Jesus to be risen to, to raise again. And it, it, it's interesting how the power of God and the power of, the power of resurrection is stronger than any stronghold on this planet. And he has power today as he had in the past. And he can change our lives. He can help us to be resurrected when he comes again. And that is my prayer for all of us today. Let's have a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we serve a strong God. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on our behalf. We, don't, we know we don't deserve it. But we know that you love us so much that you gave your only begotten son for our sins. And I'm praying that this season, when people all over the place are celebrating Easter, I'm praying that Jesus will be risen again in our lives. I'm praying that we'll bless abundantly this church, visitors, and thank you for the good news. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Did you, did you like our uh, uh, presentation? Yeah. I liked it a lot. And let me tell you one thing. This was possible because a handful of people were willing and they wanted to take time put time apart to do rehearsal, to come here every Friday um, night and sing. And they are dedicated for this. And I want to say a special thank you for the conductor, Sister Nancy. Sister Nancy, please, please come here. <clears throat> And we have, we, have, we have something for you on behalf of the, of the church and of the, our choir. Thank you so much. You took time. Yes. And then we have the second sister. And the second sister is the sister of our sister. So we want to thank you, both of you, very much. You got... You, you got involved in this project, and we appreciate your sacrifice and coming here earlier, like some, like last Friday, like two time, two hours earlier than wow, that is a lot. So we appreciate a lot, 
And we have, uh, we have something for you. I am so happy, Sister Nancy, to just say how much we love you. We love you, we love you. You have taken a lot. But what I want to commend you on behalf of the entire team is that you allowed God to use you to, to bring us all together. I am a stranger, but I feel like a family among all of my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. We know that you would have sacrificed. And so we just want to express our token of love and appreciation. And we know that this will have a special place in your home. So enjoy it as we have had the privilege and pleasure just to fellowship with you. Thank you. Let me say something. I just want to thank all of the singers. We call them the Hosanna Choir and the extras, the Hosanna extras. Because where are the extras? Raise your hands, extras. All the little ones and the fam some families. Um, we could not do this without any of them. All of them help us so much. Um, a lot of hours on Friday night is hard after the whole week working. It's really hard. But whenever you want to do something, I know you can. Okay? Our church is in a small church, but it's full of love, full of uh, lots of people who really care for each other. And if you came uh, here for the first time, come back. You see how wonderful is these people. We love to share what we have. And there's nothing more important than that. Thank you so much for all... Um, for all what you've done. And um, this is not the first time. If you are coming from another church and you want us to go and visit your church with this, we can go, okay? Because our job is to spread the gospel and not to keep it to us. We need to share it, right? That's the reason why we're doing this. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you again for the time you set apart and for your dedication. God bless you all. Okay, so we have the closing song. The closing song is Because He Lives. So I'll stand and sing the last song. Because
with this song, our worship today concludes. And uh, thank you very much for uh, being uh, involved in this um, service. Thank you for visiting with us, our visitors. And um, I have a few announcements before we, uh, we close up. Yes, um, we have, at Carrollton Church, we have um, a good habit, I would say. Um, yeah, you can sit down. You can, you, can, you can have a seat. I'm sorry. I'm, I was so um, into this program, I forgot that we have to sit down. <laughs> yes. So, at our church, we have a good habit of eating together. So I would like to invite all of you, visitors, church members, I'm sorry about those who are online, They're, they cannot have lunch with us today, but maybe next Sabbath you're invited to have lunch with us. So everybody is invited for lunch, in the fellowship lunch, fellowship room, and I would like to have uh, a prayer for, for our lunch. Um, Erdal Philip, would you like to pray? Eternal Father, we are so grateful for what you have done for us through Christ our Lord. As we now partake of the physical food, we pray that it will do our bodies good so that we can continue to serve you and to share the good news with others. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I, I have a few announcements for our church and for visitors at the same time. I, enjoying, I enjoy being a part of this church just because this church is an active, loving church church and we have some events coming up and I would like all of you to be posted with that uh, we have next Sabbath we have um, scheduled a session of safety and security training for our church and our church members um, you have to be here um, because we are going to have the presence list and check who is here and who is not here, don't worry, we're not going to do that. So, church members, next Sabbath, safety and security training for our church, it's scheduled. And then on um, April the 8th, who knows who, what's going to happen on April the 8th? Uh, 